This film depicts much of the early history of the walking horse. Here you have a Brantley's Rhone Island filly. Look at her color, look at her head. She's not very fine by today's standard. Now here's one of the early great horses, Haynes Peacock, ridden by Mr. Jack Haynes. This old horse was a country horse uh, raised up in the hills, and for the first 13 years of his life, he merely uh, was transportation for the old fellow who owned him to take his eggs to the store and his washing off and things like that. This horse is sired by Wilson's Allen and is out of a standard bred mare. Look at his shoulders work. Look at the shoulder action on this horse. A walking horse should progress in a way similar to a man climbing a ladder. And you see this horse doing that pretty well. He's got exceptionally good uh, back in action, and his front reaches out in front, although we have to remind ourselves that he's shod with nothing but keg shoes, absolutely no pads. Look at his head shake up and down. This is quite unusual for a horse out of a standard bred mare. This horse went on to win the world championship in 1940 and came back and repeated in 1941 really one of the truly great walking horses, in my opinion, of all time. Look at the fineness of his head, and uh, all the those of you who are modern viewers of the walking horse will notice that this was the day before the tail brace. Uh, his tail had been cut, but certainly no brace has been uh, is being used on him. Look how evenly Mr. Haynes rides. Mr. Haynes was a multimillionaire oil man. He uh, was not a professional rider or trainer, but this has always been one of the strong points of the walking horse, that almost anyone can get on him and ride him and look professional. As Mr. Haynes looks real professional there. This mare here is Greater Glory, the world champion mare about 1940 or 41. Back in the old days, her mother had been a world champion before the days of the celebration back at the Tennessee State Fair. Greater Glory is all, was also sired by Wilson Allen. Now, her tail's up looking a little bit better, but it does not have a brace under it. She just has a pretty good tail set. And I think you can notice that she does not have the natural looseness that Haynes Peacock had, although for a flat shot mare, she's exhibiting a good overstride. Her head is nodding in rhythm. And I would say that compared to modern day plantation horses, it, uh, she's, in my opinion, far out in front of them, which indicates to me that if we selected the right horses and trained them properly, that we could turn out a, an excellent plantation horse. And I believe this is really happening in the industry now. We are selecting better horses to go into the plantation classes, and uh, no doubt if we concentrate on that for a while, uh, that class, the quality of that class will go up and up. You see she has a very good canter. You see the smoothness of Billy Grubbs, who's on the mare. See the smoothness with which he progresses around the ring. Look at the shoulder action in the mare. The mare has a fine shoulder action, and I believe any horse trainer in the business will tell you that unless a horse has loose shoulders and gets their forward motion from their shoulders, or at least a substantial part of it, they'll never make a great horse. This is Oakwood Acre Stable down Fedville. This was owned by Frank Rambo, who at that time was the president of the Walking Horse Breeders Association. He was a car dealer down there. The cameraman evidently was uh, captivated by the scenery in the fall of the year, beautiful scene, so he's going to pan all the way around the farm. It is really one of the great show places of Middle Tennessee. I haven't been down there for a while, but uh, I know back during the early 40s, it was truly one of the great show places of Middle Tennessee. This mare is Melody Maid, uh, one of the first uh, mare world champions. She also is sired by Wilson Allen. Now, this mare, we would say today that her back is a little bit long. We would say that she's not just an exceptionally loose mare, but she was a great mare back in her time. She came to the celebration, won the two-year-old class, 
And I believe maybe they held her out one year, and she came back and eventually won the world championship. She was a mare, like a lot of these early world champions, that started out with a very modest beginning. Uh, she was a farm mare, raised on a farm up in, the, in Warren County, and uh, went from that on to become world champion. Uh, she has a wonderful canter. That's probably her best gait. You saw how easily she went into the canter. The man riding her is Urban Small, who trained uh, Melody Maid. He trained City Girl. He trained uh, uh, Melody Maid's first colt, Melody Zare, and won the Junior World Championship on it. The white mare you see now is uh, a mare that won the championship down at Baton Rouge for a year or two. She's a Brantley Roan Allen mare. Now, you notice the difference between her and some of the others. She doesn't have quite the looseness that the others have. And this is the reason Wilson's Allen eventually dominated the breed, because he could uh, produce colts that had a natural looseness that other horses, the colts of other horses, just did not have. And this mare was ridden by Mr. Vaughn over at Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. This mare, as I understand it, was uh, a mare that Wallace Brandon uh, rode when he was a little bitty boy. So this lets you know how old the films are that you're watching and uh, let you know how far really the walking horse has come. Uh, she has a right good canter, maybe lifting a little bit more in the right hind foot than we would like for her to, but she was a good mare. <clears throat> These pictures were taken at Louisville, Kentucky during the Kentucky Derby. Uh, many of these people, if we knew exactly who they were, would be of interest to you because they're Hollywood stars and other people like that. This was at the stable of General Miles, who lived at Louisville. He had a walking horse establishment there and had some very fine horses. Uh, you'll see them uh, ride them in a few minutes. They'll take them out one at a time, and we'll talk about them. This is a horse named the G-Man. This was another Wilson's Allen gilding. You can already see by what we have viewed here on these films that Wilson Allen at this time was emerging as a dominant sire within the walking horse industry. The man riding this horse is Floyd Carruthers probably the greatest of the early trainers. He was the, a man who could take a horse and change that horse and make it do something that it had not previously done. This particular horse that you're looking at now is a horse named Knox Fagan. Tell you the truth, I'm really not too well informed on this horse. Uh, I, d I don't know that I ever saw him. Uh, he's a beautiful horse. He's a horse that had a very popular color at that time because he was a sorrel with a flax mane and tail and had a white face, and that color really caught the fancy of horse people, walking horse people in particular, back uh, in the early 40s. Floyd Carruthers was such a good trainer that sometimes uh, he would advertise or a show would advertise that he would not show at a show. That meant that everybody else could bring their horses and have a chance of winning because when he pulled his truck on the ground, very few people had any hope of winning when he was in the ring. He, he found a, a dimension within walking horses that nobody else had found up to that time. And his horses were a little showier than other people's horses. This is the coat ring at the old celebration grounds in Shabbleville. Now, note the color on these coats. You notice that colt had a bald face and white uh, legs. Uh, that was very popular back at that time. In fact, if your old mare had a black colt at that, in that day, you didn't even go up on the hill to see what it was because it wasn't very important. The man whose picture you've just seen and is on the right of your film is the man whose idea led to the celebration. He was Mr. Henry Davis of War Trace. These are what we would call pleasure horses. You notice the inside animal is cantering on the wrong lead. Back at that time, that was not such a big deal because uh, really they didn't emphasize that too much. Now, this is the greatest horse of all time in my book.
This is Strolling Jim. Strolling Jim was a plow horse up in Warren County. Look at his natural looseness. This, he just loose all over. He uh, was uh, plowed as a two-year-old, and in the spring of a three-year-old, Henry Davis and Floyd Carruthers went up to see him. They bought him. They thought it would take a long time for him to get uh, ready to show. But before the end of the season, he had won 13 straight blue ribbons, including the World Grand Championship at, uh, at the first celebration. Look at his uh, back in action. Look at his front end action. He's reaching out there in front. He's nodding his head. He was a big, powerful horse. It sort of aggravates the imagination of all of us to uh, think what might have happened to the walking horse had horses like Strolling Jim, the G-Man, and other horses, Haynes Peacock, not been gilded. If they had been kept stallions and had been able to sire colts, we may have made uh, many leaps forward in a very short time, but that was not to be because at that time a gildan was uh, really valued more than a stallion. Really at this time it was assumed by most people that stallions were not uh, fit for the show ring, that they couldn't be broken well enough to uh, get them in a show ring. So mares and gildings dominated the first several celebrations, really from 1939 up till 1945, somewhere along in there. This is Floyd Carruthers, the man that you saw previously ride the G-Man in Knox Fagan. This horse is buried over behind the old hotel in War Trace, Tennessee. He's the first walking horse to ever fly on an airplane. Uh, he, he was first in many areas. Uh, he was carried to California following his win at the celebration, was showed all up and down the West Coast, and probably did more to uh, promote the walking horse on the West Coast than any other single horse in the history of the breed. He was just truly a great horse. He was a horse that, uh, when he came in the ring, the crowd just went wild. This is a horse named No Limit Allen, and this is Harlan's home over in Franklin, Tennessee. They purchased this horse and thought maybe he would make a great sire. Actually, he didn't. Uh, he never sired anything that I know of that ever uh, did anything remarkable in the show ring. These are two of his yearling colts, and probably they were never heard of again either. Of course, we all know that a few years later, Harlandale bought a black stud that did rather well. His name was Midnight Sun. But uh, at this particular time, they were trying to find a good horse. The film you're seeing now is a picture of a ride-a-thon. Actually, the, the Breeders Association produced a film in the 40s, and uh, this this what you're seeing is a part of that film. People back in that day would get together. The roads were unpaved, so they would get together and go on long rides. They would take their lunch with them. They'd stop and eat lunch and then keep riding. Uh, old men, old women, young boys and young girls, and then everybody in between would uh, put their horse in a homemade trailer and meet somewhere, and then they would all take off and ride all day long usually did this in the early spring before the weather got too hot and they would do it again in the fall of the year now this film was made on a farm down at brentwood tennessee owned by mr ward it was a real one of the real show places like uh the oakwood acre stable in fedville they had great horses that's an old merry boy mare the uh, I don't know what the Colts buy, but the old mares buy mare boy, and of course they were considered the best brood mares in the business. This is Colonel Allen. Uh, many of you have seen Colonel Allen on the registration papers of your horses. If you haven't looked, and you'll probably find him. He was a uh, we would call him a pleasure horse, as I remember. He was not a great show horse, but but a significant sire. These mares, I assume, were selected for the Ward Farm because of their color. Of course, today we don't value white horses near so much. Uh, we don't value them because when they get hot, their skin tends to turn pink. This is another mare uh, that, as far as I know, never amounted to a lot. Unfortunately, when they made this film, they selected white fences uh, more than they did great horses. 
and the white fences are beautiful, but the horses sometimes in this, on this particular farm were not significant. The territory that you're seeing there has now been turned into an industrial subdivision in Brentwood and where uh, you see horses grazing. If you went down there now, you would see Buick, Oldsmobile dealerships, uh, IBM, uh, all kinds of business and industry activities taking place on this very ground. You can see this, the man that was so captured by the scenery at Oakwood Acres Stables has also been captured by the scenery at the Ward Farm at Brentwood. But we will get back to horses in just a minute. One of the differences between horses at that time and this time is that uh, back then, you had a lot of big show places, and of course we're getting more and more of those again. But uh, I don't think we should ever forget that the backbone of the walking horse industry has always been the small farmer who had two or three or four real good brood mares. This, this era may be passing again, but such things tend to go in cycles, and I would hope that we would never get to a point where the individual farmer cannot raise good horses on his farm and produce them like any other crop, maybe. This mare is not a great mare, nor is this one. Uh, they're just good riding horses, uh, very comfortable. You can see the ease with which the <clears throat> rider progresses along the fence. Uh, the young man that you see on the horse now is the president of the family company in Nashville now. Here you have the canter, <clears throat> uh, relaxed canter. The horse could go for miles and miles like that and uh, not get too tired. Again, you have to remind yourself that all these horses are shod with keg shoes and are carrying nothing artificial other than what is necessary to make them usable in a riding way. Of course, the one exception to that might be the cut tail. No doubt is the cut tail. See the ease with which the young man rides? This is a white mare and a black stallion that were selected from Middle Tennessee horses to be sent to Arizona to start the breed of the walking horse in Arizona. But notice the lack of overstride on the part of the stallion and the lack of overstride on the part of the mare. So uh, probably needless to say, they didn't do very, a very good job of promoting the walking horse in Arizona. <clears throat> if they had carried a, a Wilson's Island stallion out there or some other breed, probably they would have done better. But uh, really, I don't think anybody ever heard of these horses after they went to Arizona. These are yearling colts. Uh, many of them are walking colts. I'm sure a few of them were gated colts because this farm also had some real fine gated horses. This film, I would say, was made in December by looking at the trees and looking at the size of the colts. Back at this time, all colts were born in the spring of the year, uh, and they were brought along at a normal pace. They were not pushed to make them grow, but they had the very best of nutrition known in that particular time, which again was uh, the early 1940s. <clears throat> I don't know the particular names of the colts out there. Uh, I don't know whether any of them ever made famous horses or not. In all probability, they did not. Uh, of course, you could say that about any group of colts in the world. Uh, in all probability, none of them made outstanding colts. What we see in this film is the homecoming of Strolling Jim. Strolling Jim had been up in Pennsylvania for a few years, and the lady who owned him 
thought he ought to come back to Wartrace, his original home, and be retired there. So she sent the horse back, and this is Strolling Jim during his retirement years. This ceremony was held in front of the old hotel in Wartrace, Tennessee. You can see Strolling Jim is still a beautiful horse. Uh, I just don't think there's ever been one more beautiful than he was. They'll ride him in a few minutes, and uh, although he has, uh, he shows the signs of age a little bit, he still hits some pretty good licks. Look how short his back is. Look how he's made. Uh, he's, he's just a picture of a horse. Remember, he was by Wilson's Island, the greatest sire, in my opinion, that ever lived in the walking horse industry. This horse is buried on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University in front of the agriculture building. And uh, I think everybody who knows horses honors his grave for his great contribution. The lady there is the wife of Floyd Carruthers, who by this time had died. Uh, she accepted the horse as a gift from the lady in Pennsylvania, and the horse did spend the rest of its life in Wartrace, Tennessee. Look at the intelligent head. Look at the bright eyes on this horse. Look at the neck on the horse, the shoulders. He was just a uh, horse way, uh, came along really before his time when compared to other horses. You're going to see a man walk around here in a minute, is Mr. W.J. McGill, one of the early historians of the walking horse business, ran a harness shop over on the square in Shelbyville and uh, really did a lot to promote the walking horse. He was the one who scouted out the pedigree of uh, old Allen F1. There had been a lot of controversy about the pedigree. Here he is, the man with a coat on his arm, right there. Uh, he was a wonderful old gentleman and made very significant contributions to the walking horse. The old hotel in the background still stands in War Trace and has what is probably the rarest collection of walking horse photographs anywhere in the world. See this horse trot? And then you saw him hit a lick or two right at the very end. Here he is. You can tell he enjoys the freedom. Now this is Ms. Carruthers riding the horse many years after he'd passed his prime. And Ms. Carruthers, I'm sure, would be the first to say that she was not a professional trainer. But even then, you're gonna see this horse fall down in a few minutes and do a big, bold, flat walk when, when she puts the correct pressure on the reins. I believe it's just around, now look at him, right, right there, right there, right there. Look at, look at him, see, he can still get in that big flat wall, big loose flat wall. One thing about training horses back at this time, people got on them, rode them in a flat walk for miles and miles and miles and for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, they, they were not in a hurry to produce. The owners were not paying a bill uh, that they couldn't handle conveniently and comfortably. So there was not quite the pressure on horse trainers that there is today. These people took these horses, made them from the ground up, and uh, they stayed for, look at that, look at that overstride. Look at that looseness. The horse, uh, it was just, he was just a phenomenal horse. He came back to the celebration after he had made the trip to California, but he was never able to uh, recapture the world championship. He was reserve champion. This is a horse named Tar Baby. And the guy riding him is Fred Walker. Look how short his legs are. He's the guy who rode Midnight Sun to the world championship. He was a man noted for being able to handle stallions. He had ridden Brown Allen, who was a pretty rambunctious kind of a stallion. He'd ridden Hunter's Allen. And uh, when Midnight Sun came along, he took him and rode him to the world championship. Although Winston Weiser 
had started the horse before Fred Walker uh, was hired as his trainer. Look, look at this horse reach out in front. Fundamentally, this is a good horse. There were many horses better than he was because he won very few f blue ribbons, but he was a good horse. He's got good back in action and he reaches well in front. Mr. Walker was a fierce competitor. He, uh, he didn't ask quarters from anybody, but he was a good, clean competitor. When he, but when he took a horse in the ring, everybody was conscious of the fact that he was in there, and all the other competitors knew they had to do their very best to beat him. You see, the canter back at that time was a little bit faster than the canter maybe we have today. But you'll notice this horse, like all the other horses we've seen in this film, was shod naturally. And I think, uh, although we have a tendency maybe to compare this horse with the modern horse, we might very well ask ourselves, how well could the modern horse of today do if he had been shod like this horse? Now you're going to see one of the great uh, movies uh, of a horse in existence today. This is Harlandale Farm in Franklin, Tennessee, and you can just guess what horse you're about to see. Not those. That's the old home place at the Harlandale Farm. Those are brood mares, probably most of them merry boy mares. Here are some Wienland Colts. <clears throat> this is made, I'd, I'd say all these film uh, that we're seeing now were made in December, somewhere along in there. The movie you're looking at now is a home movie. Uh, the, the previous film had been filmed by professionals. This, this is Midnight Sun, the king of the hill. Look at the bit that's in his mouth. That's the bit that was used on 99% of all walking horses at that time. Midnight Sun, look at his looseness. Now, you see a looseness there that you haven't seen in any other horse up to this time. This picture was made after he had won the Grand Championship and probably on a Sunday afternoon, Ms. Floyd Carruthers made these pictures. Fred Walker is riding. See his feet uh, do not come down to the uh, bottom of the horse's stomach. Even he was very short-legged man. This is the lick that developed into what we now have in the walking horse industry, because Midnight Sun was and continues to be the predominant force in breeding of walking horses. He was a big horse, just uh, you can tell he's a big horse. We would say today that his back was too long, that he didn't need all that back. But the oddity about Midnight Sun was that he could breed colts that were perfect in conformation. Of course, he bred a lot that, whose backs were too long, and he probably got as many colts that did not make under saddle as any horse, but he got more that did make under saddle than any horse. See him reach out there in front? Now, he's shod with keg shoes. In fact, they have those shoes over in Harlandale's barn right now. Shows you exactly what he was shod with. Look how straight he is in front. You'll see two or three people ride him in this film which again shows you the gentle nature of Tennessee walking horses. Many of these riders are amateur riders. Watch how he picks that hind foot up and brings it up and sets it down flat. <clears throat> he was a beautiful horse. When he and Mary Go Boy got in the ring, I don't think the walking horse breed has ever experienced such excitement as those two horses brought to